now that we've planed everything down to the correct thickness what we're going to do is we're going to get ready to cut everything to length. We're going to use the chop saw and we want to use a zero clearance chop saw with a zero clearance insert so that we don't have to worry about chipping out. This one said that the chop saw I'm about to use is set up with the zero clearance insert, a throat plate in it and all we're going to do is just take a tiny little bit off of one end and then mark that end. So I'll actually cut a little bit off and then I'll use some pencil and I'll mark that end. So we'll get set up for that and we'll get these all cut down. You'll notice I made sure the blade stopped before I lift it up on the saw. I mark my end that's been squared and that's all there is to it. So I can be repetitive now and I can go through each and every one of my pieces, square them up and uh, then we're ready to measure and cut to length. Okay, so now that we've squared an end and marked it, uh, the goal now is to measure out uh, one of each component. So in this case, I'm gonna measure one of my legs, but it's the same process when I'm measuring uh, my aprons, uh, my rails, the front blades, everything is gonna be the same process. So from here, I'm gonna line it up. And in your case, hey, yours is gonna be 22 inches long. I'm gonna line it up on the one inch. And I'm going to measure up to 23 because I'm starting on the one inch and I'm going to make a mark. Okay, once I have that mark, okay, I'll put an X on the opposite side so I know which side my blade is supposed to be on. So I don't cut on the wrong side and make my legs a little bit too short. Same thing with my aprons, rails and blades. And we're going to head over to the chop saw again. Now this can be done in a number of different ways. We're going to use chop saws this year just to get comfortable with them. Uh, you can use a miter gauge with a jig on it to hold it at the right length. You can, there's a number of different ways you can do this. This isn't uh, the only way, but we're going to use the miter gauge. We're going to set a stop up on the miter gauge so that it is repetitive. We only have to measure once on each piece. We slide it up against the stop, cut, next leg, stop, cut, next leg. It's a fairly simple process. Okay, so this one's a little different chop saw, uh, much the same as the last one though. It's still a 12 inch, this one's a DeWalt now. Uh, it has a fence on it as well, but it has a sliding stop that we've made up, okay? So what we can do is we can set up, in this case, one of the legs, we can slide it back. Okay, my blade on the scrap side, we'll hold it in place, we'll get the stop set up, tighten the stop down good so it doesn't move. And then what I like to do is remove the leg, make sure there's no dust, slide it back, and make sure that the blade is still gonna cut on the scrap side, which in this case it will. Uh, the only thing left for me to do now is to grab uh, some backing. And this one doesn't have a zero clearance throat plate, so sometimes I like to put something underneath. It's got a good fresh blade on it. Uh, and we're gonna router our chamfer on the bottom, so I'm not gonna worry about the little bit of chip. Again, wait for the blade to come to a complete stop and we've got one of our legs. All the sizes exactly how it's supposed to be. We can set that one off to the side and that one is done.